first and foremost, giving all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh, Bahashon, Yahweh Shah, Bahashon Rakhak Bagash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth in sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shah to return. And double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Baha Shom Yahweh Shai. And I'm out here once again to prophesy against Babylon, which is America, to let the so called white man know that he is at the end of his rulership to proclaim the coming of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, to, to, to proclaim the glory and honor in praise of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah in the earth, and to let our people, the true Hebrew Israelites, know that, that you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, you are the true Hebrew Israelites that the Holy Spirit speak of. The people that you read about in the book of Exodus, King David, King Solomon, okay, uh, 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 Paul, Peter, Yahweh Shah, you were ignorantly called Jesus. Okay, those are our people, okay? The Holy Scriptures is about us and how we how, how we fell as a nation of people because we transgressed against our power. We, we, we broke the first covenant that we made with our power, starting with Moses when he went on Mount Sinai. So ever since we broke that covenant, we have been in captivity. start off in the book of because there's been a lot of Calls a UFO. Okay? As a matter of fact, when, when who the world called Jesus returned, people was going to mistake his return for an alien invasion. Okay? And during that time, many people are going to be slaughtered. It's going to be a slaughter fest when who the world called Jesus returns. Okay? It's going to be, man, okay? The whole world is going to be in a panic. So this is the book of 2 Esther, chapter 13, verse 1. And it came to pass that for seven days I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea. Okay? There arose a wind from the sea. Now, is this talking about actual wind? No. Okay? How? Who, who can see wind, period? Wind is invisible to the naked eye. You can feel it. You can hear it. You can even smell it. right through it because it's such a complex compound element but one thing you can't do is see it so this can't be talking about actual wind okay Esdras must have saw something for him to say wind now you got to remember okay um the, the, the prophets and the servants of the Lord of old they used to speak metaphorically whenever they wrote down the visions which they saw in dreams So it says, and it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea, and it moved all the waves thereof. Verse 3, and I beheld, and lo, that man, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Because the Holy Scriptures tell you that the angels of the Lord are, are, are tens of thousands even thousands and thousands upon thousands of angels ministering, okay? The angels are innumerable, okay? You, you can't count how many angels there are. 
according to the Holy Scriptures, the Israelite man is an angel, okay? I'm an angel. The word angel just means messenger. So there's many angels. Okay? But one thing to take into account is that there are different types of angels. You got death angels, messengers of death. Okay, you have righteous angels, uh, uh, messengers of righteousness. So there, there's many kinds of angels. You got evil angels, messengers of evil, coming to sin and bring evil. government, okay, the, the so-called elites, the biblical Edomites, they'll tell you that some some bald-headed, buggy-eyed, gray, and Elliot Gray with, with some big black eyes, you know, some, 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 some small lips with, 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 with no nose, it, it's driving these UFOs. And that's BS, man. Okay, because you're not going to hear about it. driving UFOs. But the Holy Scriptures do tell you who's piloting these so-called UFOs. And the Holy Scriptures tell you that dark-skinned men with woolly hair is piloting these UFOs. So before I continue, let's get that in the book of Ezekiel real quick. This is the book of Ezekiel, because the book of Ezekiel, the first chapter, it not only goes into detail of what the so-called UFOs look like, but Ezekiel also goes into detail as to the men, what the men look like that are piloting these UFOs. So Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4, and I look and behold a whirlwind came out of the north. Okay. And I look and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding in itself. Now, when you look at the so-called UFOs, they literally look like fire. And, and some of them even come in different colors and shapes and forms. Okay, and it says, and a brightness was about it. And out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of fire. Okay, amber is amber is, is the color of gold. So Ezekiel said that uh, this UFO that he saw was the color of gold, and there was fire within it, mean, meaning brightness. Because whenever you whenever you look at the uh, the so-called UFOs, even if you're standing here on the ground. When you look at a so-called UFO up, up in the sky, it's bright, especially at nighttime. They literally look like moving lights moving through the, the mo mo moving through the night sky. They look like they, they literally look like uh, orbs of light moving through the night sky. Okay. So Ezekiel said that a brightness was upon it. Now picture a so-called UFO being close to you, like 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 be, being like. 50 feet close to you, okay? Those, those so-called chariots are bright, okay? You can damn near go blind from just get at one of them. They're so bright. Not that I'm saying that you would go blind, but you never know, man. He said that a brightness was about it.
verse 5. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Now, these four living creatures are the men that, that are piloting the so-called UFOs. Okay? So Ezekiel is about to give you a description of what the men look like piloting the so-called UFOs. A beard, he got, he, he got woolly hair, okay? It says they had the likeness of a man. Verse 6, and everyone had four faces, meaning, meaning each, each and one of these angels, they had a different look about them, okay? Because they had the appearance of a man, but each of them had, had a unique look on their face, okay? They, they had a particular look on their face. One angel might have had a stern look on his face. The other one might have had a, 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 a austere look. Another one a wise look. Another one a calm. You know, like, you know, so, so each of these angels, they had, they had a particular look on their face. And everyone had four wings. So these angels had four wings. Okay, each of them had four wings. Verse 7, and their feet were straight feet. Right, just, just like our feet, okay? We got straight feet. Okay? And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. So the, the sole of your feet will be the skin on the bottom of your foot. So the skin on the bottom of their foot was, 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 was like calf's foot. Okay, if you ever look at a cat's feet, you know, their feet is pretty hard at the bottom. Okay, it says, and they sparkle like the color of burnished brass. That's going into their skin color. So the men that was piloting these so-called UFOs, the Holy Scriptures describe them as being dark-skinned men with woolly hair. So not only did they have a woolly beard and, 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 and black woolly hair, but they was also brown skin. Okay? What color is brass? Brass is a brownish color. Okay? Brass is a brownish color. Now, they said that they spark like in color to furnace brass. So what happens if you take brass and you burn it in a furnace? It's going to come out a very dark brown color. So the angels, so the angels are very dark skinned men with woolly hair. And these are the men piloting what the world calls you. Okay? And they are very tall. They're very tall beings. Okay? Okay, the, 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 the angels are, 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 are very tall men. Okay, they're dark skinned and they got woolly hair. Verse 8. And they had the hands of a man. You see that? They had the hands of a man. You see my hands? They got hands like I do. Okay? They got four fingers and one thumb on, 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 on each hand. says that they had the hands of a man under their wings. It 
it says on their four sides. And they had, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went everyone straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they they had the face of a man in the face of it says in the face of a lion on the right side and the face and, and they uh four had the face of an ox an uh, ox is known for what being stern so so one of the angels had a stern look on his face and then he said one of them had the face of a lion meaning the angels meaning one of the angels had a had a, a serious look like if you look at a lion a lion is a serious uh, uh, I'm listening, brother. Hey, how's it going? You know, uh, uh, a lion is, is a very serious and, and austere creature. So, so the Holy Scriptures describe uh, the an one of the angels as having a, a serious and austere look about it. Okay, then it goes on to say they for it, uh, also had the face of an eagle. You know, an uh, eagle is uh, known for uh, an eagle is known for being the highest flying bird. Okay, an eagle is also known for, for uh, is also known for being proud, a, a, a prideful bird. No, they told it. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings, every one says was joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. So the Holy Scriptures describe. The angels as being dark skinned men with woolly hair having four wings and having the appearance of a man. Okay? So so if so if, if, if the angel of the Lord was to walk the earth today, he'll look just like me and you. You know? They'll, they'll have woolly hair, they have the woolly beard, they'll have the brown skin, you know. They, 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 they will have the likeness of a human being. So now let's go back to second Esdras. A second Esdras, which is the part of the Apocrypha, the Apocrypha, which is a part of the Old Testament of the of the uh, 1611 King James Bible. Okay, because um, in in in, 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 in the original King James Bible, the Apocrypha was added in there. But the reason why they took out the Apocrypha is because the Apocrypha a, 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 a exposes the so-called white man for the devil he is. Okay, that's and, right. And it, it goes into you know deep deep details of, of, of the end times that shall transpire in the last days, you know. So the apocrypha is actually a part of the Old Testament of the Holy Scriptures, which they took out. You know, it's a part of the 1611 King James Bible. Uh, so Second Esdras chapter uh, chapter 13 verse 3, it says, "And I beheld and lo, that man, that that man right there is talking about who the world calls Jesus." Because when, when who the world calls Jesus returns, he's coming back in what the world calls a UFO. Okay? Just, just like the angels. Yeah, all, all, all these, uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, all these different UFO sightings that people see all around the world, okay, the, the, uh, the, 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 there are angels that are piloting those uh, UFOs. Okay, angels, which, which the Bible described the angels as being dark skinned men with woolly hair. So, so it's actually angels piloting those UFOs and, and who the world calls Jesus. When he come back, you know, he's coming back with the world calls the UFO. And, and, and the Bible describes who the world calls Jesus as also being a dark skinned man with white woolly hair. So, uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 13 verse 3, it says, And I behold, lo, that man went strong with the thousands of heaven. The thousands of heavens is talking about the angels that's going to return with him and what the world calls UFOs. It says, and when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. Right, because when, when who the world calls Jesus returns, people is going to mistake his return as an alien invasion. Kind of like how they show you in, in, in the movie Independence Day. Because like the, the so-called elites uh, of this society who like to rule, rule in the dark and secret, you know, they know about the Holy Scriptures, you know. They know, they know that the true Hebrew Israelites are, are the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Indians. So they know, you know, they, 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 they've hired professional biblical scholars to study the, the Holy Scriptures in and out. 
So they know there's a lot of mysteries of the Holy Scriptures that they know that the average person don't know. So what they do is that, what, what they do is that the, the mysteries that they learn up in the Holy Scriptures, you know, whether it be prophecies or whatever, they put them in their movies. So like Independence Day, Independence Day is really about the return of, of our Lord and Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Okay, because they know that 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 when who the world calls Jesus returns, he's coming back and what the world calls a UFO. As a matter of fact, let's prove that real quick. Okay, Book of Acts, chapter one, and I, I think I'm gonna just start at seven. Now the world. The world calls them UFOs, but the Holy Bible calls them the chariots uh, of Israel. You know, the Holy the Holy Scriptures calls them chariots, in which a, a chariot is just a vehicle with which you use to, to, to travel around in. You know, e e even cars cars can be considered chariots, trucks can be considered chariots, buses can be considered chariots. But 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 the type of chariots that the angels travel in, those, those are spiritual chariots. You know. That, that's why whenever somebody sees a UFO, you know, they, they whenever somebody sees a UFO, they, they, they see it vanish, they, they see them open up portals and go inside of them, because because the, because the, the vehicles, which are the UFOs that the angels travel in, those are spiritual vehicles. So so inside those UFOs, and like, uh, they, they can teleport, they can, they can travel at light speed, they can go through portals, they, 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 can, they can transform into birds, into clouds, you know, there could be an angel hovering right, right above us right now. You wouldn't be able to see them because they could turn invisible. You know, the only, the only time the angels allow themselves to be seen is when the Lord commands them. But uh, let's let's get there real quick. Okay, the Book of Acts, because the Holy Scriptures even tell you that that uh, when, when who the world calls Jesus returns, He's coming back in what the world calls a UFO. So let's see. Here. So uh, this is the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 7. And he, who the world calls Jesus, his true name is Yahawashai in the Hebrew, and he, Yahawashai, said unto them, until he said unto his disciples, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be a witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Verse nine. And when he, when and 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 and, and, and when and, and when who the world calls Jesus has spoken these things unto his disciples, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So the Holy Scripture said that that who the world calls Jesus. He was beamed up into a cloud, right? But was that an actual cloud he was beamed up into? No. You see, and one thing people don't understand is that the Holy Scriptures tends to speak metaphorically. So, so whenever it says clouds, it's not always talking about actual clouds, you know? The clouds could, could, could metaphorically be, be talking about something else, you know? So, so the, 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 uh, the cloud here is, is, meta, is a metaphor, you know? And let's let's prove let's let's prove that, you know, the, the the cloud because sometimes when the Holy Scriptures mentions clouds, it's actually talking about chariots, which are the UFOs that that people talk about in the world. So let's prove that. Let's prove that 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 the clouds is actually talking about chariots, because the the Holy Bible calls UFOs chariots. I love the knowledge, brother. Hey, that's what I'm out here for, brother. For real, I'm actually really soaking it in right now, bro. For real, like, I'm actually really listening. Hey, I'm, I'm out here every Saturday, you know? Like, Where do right I follow around, you at? Where, uh, are you on YouTube or something? Yeah. What is it? Uh, my YouTube channel is uh, Dark Dark Matter. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can, uh, yeah, it, it's Dark Matter. And then, uh, Dude, I'm really, really listening into this, man. Like right now, bro. I run podcasts, bro. So like for real, like you should totally like tune in to one of the podcasts one day, bro. Hey, I'll be delighted. For real, people need to hear this. It's dark matter. Alright, here I I, just... uh, I got an iPhone, just like you do. Dark matter. Oh, okay. I 
the why and how would uh, work better. How would uh, yeah, you and you can uh, that that's that's my YouTube. Channel. I got it. I got it, bro. You already know. I'm, I'm definitely yep. about to tune in, bro. Like for real, because I'm actually listening. I'm actually listening in. Yeah, I, I will. Like for real, like I, I definitely, like, I've been learning about things. Bro. Like for real, I'm definitely, like you teach, like you. I'm definitely willing to learn, bro. Like for real. Yeah. I mean, if you're interested, be sure to subscribe. Always. Always, bro. For real. Thank you. All right. Take care, brother. Keep teaching up, man. All right, man. <laughs> you know? Hey. You never know who, who the elect might be, you know? You never know who the elect is. I mean, if, if, if he's of the elect, you know, the, the, the Lord the Lord is going to draw him to this word. You know, he, he said he was soaking it all in, you know, because, you know, I mean, which, which goes to show you the importance of, of coming out on the highways and hedges, because you, you never know who you might stumble across, you know. That's why we have to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, you know. That That's why, that's why we have to come out here constantly and teach, because you, you, you because you never know who might stumble across. You might come across a, a man that's of the elect and the Lord might wake him up. You know? So it's always good to come out here uh, year, year, uh, in season, out of season to teach. You know? We, we don't know who the elect is, but we know that they're going to wake up in these last days. You know? Whether if he's a part of the 144,000 or the, you know, the great multitude that's going to wake up in the last days, you know, and stand upon their feet and receive his word. You know, either way it goes, you know, the, the elect, the elected is the one third of the nation of Israel. So they're out there somewhere. The Lord just has me out here to fish for them, you know. So uh, this is the book of Psalms. Okay, now, now let, let's prove that, that the cloud that, that who the world calls Jesus was beamed up into, let's prove that that cloud was the actual chariot. Okay, let, man, what's wrong with people? He's about to turn down a one-way street. Man, this this kingdom is through. <laughs> this kingdom is through. But uh, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse three. It says, "Who laid the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot?" So it said, "Who maketh the clouds his chariot?" So that proves that the clouds, sometimes when the Holy Scriptures mentions clouds, it's talking about chariots, okay? Which, which chariots are, are the spiritual vehicles that, that the angels travel around in, okay? The angels, now when, who the world calls Jesus returns, he's coming back in what the world calls a, a, a UFO. He's coming back in what the Bible calls a chariot, who maketh the clouds his chariots, who maketh walking upon the wings of the wind okay now let's go back to Acts chapter 1 verse 9 and when Yahweh had spoken these things unto his disciples while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud a chariot received him out of their sight verse 11 which also said ye men of Galilee while stand, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahawashai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner. So Yahawashai was taken up into a chariot, right? One of the angels said unto the Lord's disciples, this same Yahawashai that left in the chariot shall come back in a chariot. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter one, verse seven. Okay. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he, Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, behold, he cometh with clouds, with chariots, which the angels which the angels travel in. The angels travel in what the world calls chariots. Behold, he cometh with clouds. He cometh with the, the angels, the chariots. Okay, 
and every eye shall see him. Why? Because when, when who the world calls Jesus return, his return is going to be broadcasted all throughout the earth. People is going to be recording him on their iPhones. Okay, they're going to be doing a, a live record on their iPhones. Okay, they, they, they're going to be recording him live on their iPhones. So, Yahweh's return is going to be broadcasted uh, 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 all throughout the earth. Okay, the, 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 his, broad, his return is going to be broadcasted on the news. Okay, there's going to be governments all around the world calling his return an alien invasion. People's going to be panicking, running, peeing, and, and doodling on themselves. People's going to be stampeding over one another just to get away from the wrath of the Lord. And you're not going to be able to escape. Ain't nobody escaping Judgment Day. Okay? So Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, are mine. Yeah, every kindred of the earth is going to well because of Yahweh Shai. Because they're going to think it's some kind of alien invasion. Okay? They're going to mistake his return for an alien invasion. Especially when they see the innumerable amount of angels with them. People is going to bug out. They're going to freak out. And that's why, that's why um, Esau, okay, that's why he, he is constantly demonizing our Lord. Call, calling him an alien. You know, saying, saying, well, would not the earth be in danger if there was an alien in threat? First off, Yahweh Shai is no alien, okay? This earth belongs to him. So how the, how the hell can he be an alien? The earth belongs to him. This is his planet. But you see, we're talking about we're talking about uh, uh, we're talking about Edomites here. They're, 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 they're the devil. The word devil means deceiver. They were set up to deceive and mislead the whole earth. <coughs> That's why the so-called white man keeps calling our Lord and Savior an alien. Just look at Independence Day. Independence Day was about our Lord and Savior's return. But but what but what did they depict our Lord and Savior? What did they depict the angels as being aliens? Aliens traveling around and, and, and uh, so-called UFOs uh, shoot, shooting at people, shooting down airplanes. Nah, man. No, I, I, earlier I just went into what the angels look like. The angels have the likeness of a man. Our Lord and Savior has the appearance of a man. It tells you that. As a matter of fact, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man? That's Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. It says, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So he had on a garment like this that came down to his foot with a golden girdle. A girdle is like a warrior's belt, okay? That's what warriors wear. So Yahweh Shai had on a golden girdle, okay? He had on a warrior's belt. Because because it tells you in the book of Exodus, let me just get it real quick. Let's 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 find out why Yahushai had on a girdle, a, a warrior's belt. It tells you in the book of, of Exodus. This is the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 3. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. It says, The Lord is a man of war. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is his name. So the Lord is a man of war. So of course he had on the golden girdle. That's what warriors wear. Okay, warriors wear girdles in order to protect their stomach and their intestines from being ripped out by, by enemy weapons. Okay? Okay, it was common for warriors to wear girdles in order to protect their stomach. Exodus 
chapter 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, he has white woolly hair on his head, and he has white woolly hair uh, on his face. So he had a white woolly beard, and he had white woolly hair on his head. It's white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why is that? It tells you that in the book of Genesis, the 49th chapter. Let's get that real quick. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49. Chapter 49, and I'll, I'll just start at verse 9. Judah is a lion's whelp, a lion's roar. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? That's going into the race wars, which is something totally different. So, continuing on. Okay, verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Shiloh is another way of saying peace. How do you say peace in the Hebrew? Shalom, which is King Solomon's name in the Hebrew. So Shiloh is talking about uh, Yahawashai. And uh, King Solomon was one of Yahawashai's reincarnations. Okay, so it says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, until Yahawashai come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Right, because when Yahawashai returns, he's coming back to first gather his elect men. Okay? Yahawashai is not coming back. Yahawashai is not coming back to deliver the whole nation of Israel. Because the because the whole nation of Israel is not going to repent. Two-thirds of our people is not going to repent. Which means two-thirds of the nation of Israel is going to be destroyed on this site. Two-thirds of our two-thirds of the nation of Israel is going to be destroyed on this site for their refusal to repent. Yahawashai come back in this generation, he's coming back to deliver his elect men, whosoever they may be out there. So continuing on, uh, Genesis chapter 49 verse 11, binding his foal unto the wine and his ass coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Verse 12, his eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. So now he said his eyes shall be red with wine, right? So let's go back to uh, uh, Revelation chapter one, verse 14. His head and his hairs talking about who the world calls Jesus. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, it says, his hair and his hairs were white like wool. So who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, he has white woolly hair on his head, and he had a white woolly beard. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Meaning his eyes were red because he drank a lot of wine. When you drink a lot of wine, what happens? Your eyes turn red. Okay, your eyes turn red when you drink a lot of wine. And it, it is recorded throughout the Holy Scriptures that, that Yahawashah was a wine bibber. But he had a reason for being a wine bibber because he was catching hell his whole life. Okay, whenever Jake catch hell, one of the things he liked to do is what? He likes to drink. And a matter of fact, the Holy Scriptures tell you that that wine may make it the heart merry. Okay, wine, wine maketh the heart merry, happy. 
That's what the word merry means. The word merry means happy. Okay? So the scripture saying, wine, wine make it make it a, a person's mind merry. So in order to alleviate the hell that Yahweh was going through, he, he would drink wine. Okay? And one thing about Jake is Jake likes to drink wine in order to es escape the reality. <laughs> okay? Jake, Jake likes to drink wine in order to escape the harshness of, of the reality of the things he's going through in his life. So Yahweh had a reason for being a wine bibber. And not only that, but wine, wine is one of the best tasting drinks there is, okay? Wine, I mean, wine, wine is what? Wine is sweet and it has alcohol in it. Now, back in the ancient world, wine was made differently, okay? Okay, our people, our people did not use additives in wine like they do today. They put additives in wine nowadays. But back in the ancient world, wine was made from fruits and spirits, real spirits. Okay, hard liquor was, was made from wood, particular, uh, particular trees, particular wheat, particular grains, distilled. Okay, not, not, not this processed uh, shit we drink today, okay? Wine and liquor as a whole back in the ancient world was, was, was way better. But just to give you a good idea, man, even wine was stronger back then. Okay, so I'm gonna continue reading. Uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 15 it says and his feet like it's a fine brass as if they burned in the furnace so who the world calls Jesus his skin color is described as being a very dark brown color what happens if you take brass and you burn it in the furnace it comes out a very dark brownish color so Yahweh his skin color was more was more darker than my skin color okay Yahweh Shai was, was a very dark, dark, dark brown skinned man with white woolly hair and a white woolly beard, and his eyes was red because he drank a lot of wine. And his feet like it to fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Right, the sound of many waters. He had a deep voice. chains and shackles in slavery in the kingdom of heaven. That's, that's, that's where Cheshire is going. Okay, so So back in 2nd Estrus Chapter 13, verse 3. And I beheld and lo, that man, Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, waxed strong with the thousands, the angels, traveling in what the world calls UFOs of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. Because when Yahawashai returns, people was going to mistake his return 
for, for an alien invasion. Verse 4, and whensoever the violent, oh, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, now when it said the voice out of his mouth, that's talking about coming out of, out of his chariot. Okay? Because the chariots, the chariots shoot pure concentrated light laser beams. And people are going to be melted by that. People's going to die by the angels when, when the Lord, people's going to die by the Lord himself when he returns. So you, you Christians and these uh, Christian churches talking about, oh, happy days. Nah, there ain't no happy days, okay? Matter of fact, when, when, when the Lord returns, when, when who the world calls Jesus returns, that's going to be a terrifying day of darkness. And a matter of fact, let's go to the book of Amos. Okay. This is the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. Why? To what end is it for you? Oh, do, 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 do that sound like a day of, 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 of uh, do that sound like a time of all happy days? When Jesus walked, nah, bro. That's a day of terror, darkness, death, and destruction. There's nothing. Ex well, to, to the Lord's elect, that day will be an exciting day, but it would also be a terrifying day because we don't know who's of the elect. We're hoping to be of the elect because we know that the judgment of the two thirds of our people, as well as the heathens uh, here in America, their judgment is going to be those nuclear missiles, which is going to be shot off from Russia and other countries, such as China, North Korea, I, uh, Iran, NATO, Russia, okay? So, you know, the, the ones of us that are of the elect, that are still alive in that day, we're gonna be praying and hoping that the Lord, that the Lord deliver us. So Amos, chapter five, Verse 18, it says, Woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. Right, because a lot of our people, they're expecting Cesare Borgia to come back, okay? Well, guess what? That man is not, the, 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 this man that you see in the Christian churches, the man that you see, the, the, the image of, of, of who you call Jesus, that you see in these Christian, Christian churches, that's not Jesus. That's Cesare Borgia. And, and, and during the Renaissance period, he was painted to be the son uh, of the Most High. But guess what? The, 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 the image of Jesus in these Christian churches, that's not the true image of Jesus, okay? The Holy Scriptures de describe who the world calls Jesus. The Holy Scriptures describe who the world calls Jesus as being a dark-skinned man with white woolly hair, a white woolly bear, having red eyes, a golden girdle and having a garment down to the foot because he was a man of war. That's why he wore a golden girdle. He had a deep voice and he and, 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 and he's dark skin. He has very dark brown skin. I'm talking about who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. So 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 the, the man that people see in the Christian churches, okay, the man, the the, 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 the the image of Jesus that people see in these Christian churches, that's not Jesus. That's Cesare Borgia. And that was an actual man that lived during the Renaissance period. Okay, look, look it up. They're, they were known as the Borgia family. And Cesare Borgia, not only was he a murderer, but he committed incest with his sister. He murdered his sister's husband just so he could have sex with his sister multiple times. And then on top of that, he was a pedophile. Okay, and, and his father, Pope Alexander VI, okay? His father was Pope Alexander VI. So that man is Cesare Borgia. So if you're expecting Cesare Borgia to come back and deliver you, well, guess what? That, that This is what Amos have to say about that. Amos 5 verse 18. Woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. 
to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So when Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, okay, the, the, the Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, he's a dark skinned man with white woolly hair and a white woolly beard, and his eyes was red, you know, having very dark brown skin. When, 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 when Yahawashai, who the world ignorant, ignorantly called Jesus returned, the scriptures say that's going to be a day of darkness. Okay? It says, verse 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear metal, or went and leaned his hand, or, or, or went, or, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? So the day of the Lord is going to be dark. It's, that's going to be a very dark time. That's not that's not going to be a day of light. That's going to be a day of darkness, a day of death, terror, catastrophe, and judgment. Chapter 2, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. So the day of the Lord is described as a day of darkness and of gloominess. It says, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So the times that's coming is gonna be unlike anything that has ever happened on this planet. Now, back in Second Estrus, Chapter 13, verse 4. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, talking about out of his chariot, all they burned that heard his voice. Because Yahawashai is going to be shooting pure, concentrated laser beams on, 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 on the inhabitants of the earth. Okay? That's going to be the time of the wicked being judged for, for their evil and wicked and sinful deeds. That includes the two thirds of our people. That also includes you heathen nations. Okay? It says, like as the earth faileth when it filleth the fire. Verse 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven. Okay? Now when it says the four winds of heaven, that's talking about that's talking about the four corners of the earth. North, east, south, and west. So there's gonna be military men. There's gonna be military men from every nation. Think about that. There's gonna be military men from every nation that's gonna to come together to fight against our Lord and Savior Yahawashai. And guess what? Those same military men are going to be destroyed by our Lord and Savior. After this, after this, I beheld it low. There was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man, Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, that came out of the sea. But I beheld it low. He had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven and I could not. So Yahweh's chariot with the world cause UFO is going to be so big 
that you're not going to be able to see the beginning or the end of it. Okay? Esther said he had raised himself a great number. a great mountain and flew up upon it. But I wouldn't have seen the region or place where all the hill was graven, and I could not. So you're not going to be able to see the beginning or the end of Yahweh Shai's uh, uh, so-called UFO, his chariot. You're not going to be able to see the beginning or the end of it. It's going to be so enormous. But guess what? The Lord is still going to put the Spirit on them to fight. Okay? Because the Lord loves drama. The Lord loves drama. Okay? The Heavenly Father, He's the head director uh, of this whole movie that, that, that we are currently living. Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, out of his chariot, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Woo, so think about that. The, 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 the beam that Yahweh shot, shot out, of, out of his chariot was so powerful that it literally created a, a, a big ass a, a, a Dragon Ball Z slash Final Fantasy explosion. Okay, it just said BOOM!
explosion was likened to uh, was likened to sparks and tempest. Okay, and the laser beam that came out of Yahweh's chariot that was likened to until a uh, 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 flame, pure concentrated laser beams. So Yahweh is going to be shooting pure concentrated laser beams out of his chariot. You know, uh, killing people down here on the earth, and he's going to be wiping out. Uh, uh, e e Esau's air force and ground forces as well as these heathens air forces and ground forces okay second Ezra chapter 13 verse 11 and they will all mix together the blast of fire the flaming breath and the great tempest which fell which fell with violence upon the multitude which, which was prepared to fight and burned them up, every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. Think about that, an innumerable multitude. So this multitude was so big that, that after Yahawashai finished his attack, there was nothing left but, but the smell of dust and smoke. So second Ezra, Chapter 13, verse 11. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up, everyone, so that upon a sudden uh, of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. How's it going? So, 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 so what, what, what Esther saw in this vision made him so sick to the point to where he was afraid, <laughs> you know? He woke up sick, you know, and that it was, it was common for that to happen to many of the prophets back in the ancient world, you know? Whenever they, whenever they would have visions or dreams that were terrifying, they would wake up feeling ill, you know? So when, when who the world calls Jesus returns, he's coming back in what the world calls a, a UFO, okay? And, and, and he's coming back to make war with our enemies, starting with, with the so-called white man and the rest of these heathens, okay? He, he, he's coming back. He's coming back to, 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 to wage war. And he's coming back to proclaim, to proclaim this planet. Because the kingdom of heaven is gonna start with him making his grand return, you know? And, and, and delivering his elect men. So, oh yeah, Matthew 10. There was another scripture I wanted to get right there. Oh, so this is the book of Matthew, chapter 10. are the words uh, of Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. He said, think not that I am come to set peace on earth. Okay, so so when when who the world calls Jesus return, okay, he's coming back in what the world calls a UFO, you know? And, 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 and when he returns, a lot of people is going to mistake his return as an alien invasion. Because when he comes back, not, not only is he coming back in what the world calls a UFO, but the angels, they're coming back in what the world calls UFOs too. So he's coming back with the innumerable amount of angels. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 31 says, he said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And what is a sword used for? A sword is an instrument of death, okay? And again, going back to Exodus chapter 15, verse 3, it tells you that the Lord is a man of war, okay? So so, so when our Lord and Savior <laughs> returns, it's going to be war on this planet, man, okay? And he's coming, he's coming back to take, he's coming back to take the so-called white men out of power, as well as these heathens, okay? And he's coming back to, to establish the Israelites, which are the so-called Negro, Latino, Native Indians, to, 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 to set us back up in rulership, okay? Because the earth, the planet earth really belongs to our nation, 
okay? The, 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 this whole planet really belongs to the nation of Israel, okay? The Holy, the Holy Scriptures tell you, tells you that. As a matter of fact, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, I think that's Second Ezra, the sixth chapter. Book of Second Asterisk, chapter six, verse fifty-four. Okay, which uh, Second Asterisk is, is a part of the Apocrypha. Okay, the the Apocrypha is, is a part of the Old Testament of the Holy Scriptures. Okay, the sixteen eleven King James Bible. Now, the reason why the so-called white man took the Apocrypha out of the Holy Scriptures is because the Apocrypha exposes who he is. Okay. And not only that, but the Apocrypha goes, goes deeper in, into detail concerning the future events which, which shall transpire upon the earth in, 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 in this timeline, okay? We are currently living in the last days, and, and the Apocrypha speaks about that, okay? There's prophecies in the Old Testament of the Holy Scriptures that, that, that has not happened yet, but that's going to happen in the near future, okay? Such as martial law, uh, uh, famine, Okay, uh, what's a famine? A famine is a food shortage. The Holy Scriptures prophesy of that. So there's going to be a food shortage in the last days. People is going to be fighting over food. People's going to be killing each other over food. There's going to be civil wars here in America. People is going to be thrown in concentration camps, FEMA camps. People is going to be getting tortured and beheaded in, in these different uh, FEMA camps or whatnot. You know, the Holy Scriptures speak about that. There's going to be martial law all throughout the streets. It's going to be total anarchy out here. Ain't nobody going to care what the president uh, uh, of these different countries are, are going to have to say. Okay, the, the, the dollar is going to be worthless. People are going to be tossing their dollars, their, 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 their money in the streets because it's going to be worthless. You know? So, uh, but according to the Holy Scriptures, the so-called white man, he, they are the biblical Edomites. And, and, and the Lord is coming back to take them out of power. Now, proof that the earth that belongs to our nation, let's go to uh, Second Asterisk, which is a part of the Old Testament of the Holy Scriptures, chapter 6, and I'll start at verse 54. It says, And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord over thy creatures, of him come we all. Right? Because we, we all come from Adam, right? Right? Because Ad Adam and Eve were, were, were a group of people. Adam, Adam was a group of men, Eve were a, a, a group of, of, of women, okay? And, and Adam and Eve, they were all brown-skinned people with woolly hair, okay? Wasn't no such thing as a kraken back then. So, second answer and a matter of fact, when you look up the word Adam, the word Adam goes back to the Hebrew word Adama, which means from the earth. But what color is the soil of the earth? It's brown, right? Just, just, just like your skin. Your skin is brown, just like the soil of the earth. So the word Adam goes back to the Hebrew word Adama, which means from the earth. Now, let's uh, go to Second Asterisk, chapter 6, verse 54. It, it says, And after these, Adam also, whom, whom thou madest Lord over thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also of whom thou hast chosen. Well, well, what nation of people have the Lord chosen on this planet? The Lord have chosen the Israelites. Okay, who are the, who, who are the Israelites? The Israelites, are, the Israelites are are, 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 are the so-called Black, Latino, and Native Indians. Those are the true Hebrew Israelites in the Holy Scriptures. Okay, the Puerto Ricans are Israelites. The Mexicans are Israelites. The Native Indians are Israelites. The Seminole Indians are Israelites. The the Dominicans are Israelites. The Haitians are Israelites. The, the Jamaicans are Israelites. Okay, the so-called Negroes are Israelites. The, the Colombians and Yurugians are Israelites. The, the Panamians are Israelites. The Guatemalans are Israelites. Okay, you even got uh, you even got some people who are Irish who are Israelites. Okay, there are people. Okay, they go back to our nation. Okay, the Irish, the Italians. Okay, uh, uh, okay, hey, a lot of them are Israelites because they go back to our people. Okay, so our, our nation is big, man. Okay, we we have a great nation. The Lord made us a great nation. You know. No, uh, uh, okay, Brazilians, the Brazilians are Israelites, the Argentinians are Israelites, the, Chile the, the Chileans are Israelites, okay, so, so we, so there, 
there, there are a lot of Israelites amongst our nation. Okay? So, so, so the people of whom the Lord have chosen to be his people are the Israelites. Okay? The Lord created us to be a special people unto himself. Okay? That, that, that's why, that's why whenever you see, a, that's why whenever you turn on the TV, who, who do you see doing all those amazing things? Our people. Okay? Rather if it be sports, music, it could be art, it, it could be anything. Our people are, our people greatly excel in our life. Because we are the Lord's, we are, we are the Lord's true chosen people. Okay? Those people over there in the land of Israel, they are not the real Jews. Okay? According to the Holy Scriptures, their father's lineage go back to Esau. They are imposters. They stole our heritage and called themselves Jewish. Okay, as a matter of fact, they 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 went into that land around what? Around the mid 1900s during World War II. Okay, they they went into our land. Okay, they don't belong in that land. We do. The land of Israel belongs to our nation. As a matter of fact, let's prove that real quick. Okay. Those people in the land of Israel today, those, those, those Jewish people, they're not the real Jews. The Holy Scriptures describe the real Jews as being so-called Negroes. Okay, our Lord, okay, who the world calls Jesus, he's from the tribe of Judah. He's a Jew. The Holy Scriptures, the Holy Scriptures describe him as a dark-skinned man with woolly hair, as I read earlier in the book of Revelation, the first chapter. Now, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. It says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty. Who's living in poverty? The Israelites. Okay, as a matter of fact, when you read the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the Lord said that the Israelites will live in poverty in the last days for breaking his law, statutes, and commandments. That's why we're on the bottle. That's why we're living in the ghettos, the slums. We're living on reservations because we are the Lord's people. The Lord said that he will put us on the bottle be disobedient, but guess what? He said that he said that we would not be on the bottom forever. Okay, that's why our Lord and Savior is coming back in the last days in this generation to deliver us out of our captivity, to set us back up to being kings and princes. Because according to the whole, according to the Holy Scriptures, the Israelite man is a prince, and the Israelite woman, the so-called Negro Latino Native Indian woman, she's a princess. Okay, we 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 our our, our family's lineage goes back. Fathers, Moses, that, that, that's, that's our ancestors, jo uh, Job, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, those are our ancestors, okay? So, so when the Lord comes back in these last days, he's going to set us up to be royalty again. We're going to be ruling on this planet as kings and priests and princes and princesses on the planet. So uh, it says, uh, Revelation 2 and 9. I know that works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Right, because the scriptures say that he that have wisdom of the Holy Scriptures is considered rich in knowledge. Okay, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So those people in the land of Israel telling the whole world they're, they're Jewish, they're not Jews. Revelation 2 and 9 just said that they are the synagogue of Satan. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Revelation 2 and 9. It says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So those, those, those rats in the land of Israel right now, they're not the real Jews, okay? As a matter of fact, let's prove that, that the Jews really go back to, to so-called black people, okay? This is the book of, Je this is the book of Jeremiah. Man, I, I know this whole book here. Well, I wouldn't say any now, Okay, because who comes from the tribe of Judah? So-called black people. Well, the Holy Scriptures describe them as being dark-skinned. Okay? Let's see. Let's see. So this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. It says, Judah mourneth in the gates thereof languish, they are black unto the ground. So wait, black people come from the tribe of Judah. I just read it right here in Jeremiah 14 and 2. So those people in the land of Israel. They're not the real Jews. Okay? Okay? The Holy Scriptures describe who the world calls Jesus as being a dark-skinned man. Okay? Who the world calls Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. Okay? The Bible describes him as being dark-skinned. Okay? Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. 
and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one liker to the son of man. Who's the son of man? That's talking about who the world calls Jesus. One liker to the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paths with a golden girdle. Okay, Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Come on, who has woolly hair? So-called black people. So who the world calls Jesus, the Bible describes him as having white woolly hair. Okay? It says his head and his hairs, meaning the hair on his head, and, and, and his beard, okay? His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Meaning how long, how long you be here? Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna get ready to go soon, but I'm out here uh, every Saturday, normally around this time. Verse 15, and his feet like a fine grass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. You know, uh, so long for for uh, rereading those scriptures again, I just wanted to you know, identify somebody who's listening. You know, I mean, I, I, saw, I saw that the brother stopped by and, you know, he was listening in his truck or whatnot. So you know, I, just, I just wanted to go back to a couple of scriptures to edify him. You know, but I pretty much brought out all the scriptures concerning uh, the outside of the earth. waiting for Yahweh's return and double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. With that, I'm going to say Shalom is on to the next one. DTA Abad Babal.